Greetings everyone. Today is Hearing God number seven by planning in prayer. And this is so, so very important. John 7, 16 to 18. Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He who speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory who sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. On one of the trips to Uganda, the Lord told me to speak on the three gifts, the gift of salvation, the gift of righteousness, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Over and over again in the different churches, I spoke on these three gifts. Then at a large church, I brought the people through salvation and that was fine. And I thought they had all repented. And suddenly an old man stood up and he said seven times, repent, 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 repent. And suddenly everyone knelt down and truly repented. And I realized that only then did they really repent. After the repentance, a paralyzed girl came forward, slithering on the floor, shouting, I will never forgive my sister. I will never forgive my sister. Well, there wasn't much I could do with her then. But the next day, we went over to the village crusade, where I preached to a number of people. Asked if anyone wanted to receive the Lord and no one came forward. Then I asked, would anyone like to really walk in righteousness. And the entire place came forward. And again, there was serious repenting. When I got back, the paralyzed girl was in his church and I asked if I could pray for her. And I said to the young lady, if you will forgive your sister, the Lord will heal you. She says, how do I? And I helped her and after a while, she actually did forgive her sister. And all of a sudden she says, that's strange. I can feel my legs. I haven't felt them for 17 months. There's strength coming into them. And the next thing she got up and walked, the Lord had healed her. Godfrey, our leader then said that they had gone through some revival in the Idi Amin period. But lately the pastors, a lot of the pastors, had been tempted by the prosperity cult, going after worldly riches instead of the riches of the spiritual realm in Jesus. And so for a few years they had seen no healings. But they said, we saw healings tonight, and that is because you are preaching the truth, salvation, righteousness, and then the Holy Spirit. The devil has no regard for the sinner because he has control over them already. But on the other hand, the sinner thinks he has control over himself. Think about an alcoholic for a moment. What has happened here? They think they are in control, but actually they have lost control because they become weaker and weaker and weaker in that sin until they become an alcoholic or a drug addict. Nobody wants to become that. They are just too weak to say no at this point. But Jesus has made a way for us. And this is true repentance. And the dictionary says about repentance, radical turnaround, to say no to that sin and yes to God. No to the devil and yes to God. Because God 
has made a way. Jesus has made a way with what, what he did for us on the cross. And when we truly repent, Jesus gives us the grace to come out of that sin and walk in his truth and righteousness. 1 Timothy 6, 11 says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. And Romans 10, verse 10 says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. And Jesus, the brother James, talks of righteousness in James 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Just as a sinner becomes weaker and weaker through sin, so the man who pursues righteousness is able to become stronger and stronger in righteousness until the gift of righteousness frees us from sin. When we submit to God to only do his will, there will be no unrighteousness left in us. How wonderful this word of God is. One man asked me, if the gift of righteousness is a free gift, why must we work towards it? I said, well, if you were given an aeroplane, would you be able to fly it? No, you'd need many lessons. In the same way, the Bible teaches us and trains us in all righteousness. You need also fuel for the plane to take off and air to hold it up. In the same way, prayer with righteousness and the wind of the Holy Spirit will enable us to take off and stay up there in the higher dimensions of faith. The gift of the Holy Spirit has nine supernatural gifts enabling us to walk by faith just like a plane. We move forward in obedience to do exactly what the Father has told us. John 7 37 to 39, it says, In the last day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Holy Spirit, that they would receive. For as yet, the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So how can the Holy Spirit flow out of us as rivers of living water? It is waiting on God. It is hearing Him. Because in Him we plan. We ask His advice. We ask His guidance. We read the scriptures and hear we are able to plan our lives ahead effectively and well. For instance, what about preparing sermons? Well, to do it on your own strength would be totally wrong. For one thing, one would be so limited in what we could say. If you try and do a sermon on your own strength, the Lord will just say, well, you don't need me then, do you? And we'll leave it you to it. But when we wait on the Lord, he leads us from scripture to scripture. He speaks to us. He shows us things. And then when we go and preach, the people respond. And God accomplishes so much more. So if you are a preacher, remember, Always prepare in prayer. Plan your sermons in prayer. If you're writing a book, write it in prayer. Whatever you're doing, plan in prayer and you will succeed. Jump.